Welcome to Kevin Dale Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, we are going to be putting the classic EF-135 F2 against the newly released 135 1.8 RF lens. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. The Canon EF-135 F2 is a classic lens for portrait photographers, wedding photographers. It has been dubbed Lord of the Rings, one of the sharpest EF lenses ever released, but it was released in 1992. So Canon kind of surprised the world by releasing the RF-135 replacement for it. And the reason why I say surprised is because we are five years into the RF mount and we still don't have a flagship 35 millimeter L lens, which is kind of odd. But as somebody who loves shooting at 135 when I'm here outdoors, I was definitely uh, pleasantly surprised by the release of the 135. And so I went ahead and got one. But this was a pretty awesome lens, the EF-135. I've taken so many amazing pictures with it. It's my go-to. Uh, I like to shoot it at weddings, outdoors when I have lots of space. I like to shoot through foreground elements with it. I like to shoot into the sun with it. I just think that this lens has a special character to it. And so we're gonna put these two lenses against each other because I know a lot of you out there are probably looking at the $20.99 price tag of this RF-135 and you're thinking to yourself, it's a specialist lens. And you're right, it is a specialist lens. I consider my core lenses as a portrait photographer uh, in the prime world anyway, to be 35, 50, and 85. 135 is kind of a specialty lens and quite frankly, a lot of you might opt for a 70 to 200 in that situation, the 2.8. You can check out my review of that lens and the link in the description below. But before we get started, let's dive into the physical differences of the lens. So as you can see uh, right here, that the EF-135 is about an inch shorter than the RF-135. But that's a little deceptive if you're shooting on mirrorless because in order to make this a fair comparison, you have to use the EF to RF adapter. So when you put the EF to RF adapter on there, the new RF is actually a tiny bit shorter. I think it's like a tenth of an inch shorter. So in real world use, it's a wash. So when you look at the EF, this is a 72 millimeter. The new RF actually utilizes an 82 thread, which is the same thread size that you'll find in their flagship 85, which is my favorite lens. And I'll also do a comparison a little bit later uh, in this episode where I compare the new uh, RF, not only to this EF, but I'll throw in a few shots on the new uh, 85, 1.2 as well. I will say right off the bat that on my uh, R5 and my R7, when I slap this old EF-135 on there, in general, it does a pretty good job. Uh, it's beautiful. It renders the images great, but I do notice that when I zoom in, I do see quite a bit of chromatic aberration in really bright conditions like this, especially if uh, a subject has like blonde hair or you see something like a Nike logo, you'll just see some nasty green fringing around the white of the Nike logo. And so, one of the things I'm going to be looking at when I compare these two is I'm going to shoot it in bright conditions and I'm going to see if that's corrected on this new RF-135. On the RF-85 1.2, and you can check out my review in the link in the description below, I found that that went away. And so the RF-85 1.2 is absolutely worth the upgrade in my opinion. Uh, we're going to see if that's actually the case with the RF-135. I can talk all day. Let's go test this out in the field. We're going to do some outdoor shoots. And I'm going to just do some street photography, test out the autofocus on these guys. We're also going to do some portrait sessions outdoors and in the studio. And we're also going to check out video uh, capabilities of both of these lenses. So let's dive into this review right now. So I know I did start the episode off talking about the differences between the RF and the EF-135. 
I will get to the file comparisons later on in the episode, but somebody booked me to do a portrait session outdoors and I jumped at the chance to use my new RF-135. So let's check out how this guy works out in the field right now. Uh, as you see right here, it's doing a really great job of locking onto the subject. It's doing an excellent job of uh, moving around obstacles. As you can see right here in this example, I'm shooting through bubbles uh, and it creates really nice pleasing bouquet. And then of course, as you can see in this example right here, as I'm shooting it, uh, you can see these bouquet balls on the lights behind my model. And it did an incredible job there uh, for tracking as I have the model catwalk toward me. I mean, look at how well it locks on. It's not hunting, it's doing a great job of locking in. Of course, a lot of that is attributed to the R5's autofocus system, but it did an excellent job here. Now let's look at a few examples I took in the studio. I think it did an incredible job in the studio. Uh, my studio is 700 square feet, so I can use it in the studio, but obviously keep in mind that if you're not used to using the 135 focal length, it may be a bit too long for some of your studios, especially if you have a home studio. But I thought it did a fantastic job. For these test shoots I did for these models for their agencies, and uh, the agencies were pleased with these results. So yeah, I love the way that the lens looks. It does a really great job on portraiture, and I really do think that the characteristics of it are very consistent with my RF50 and my RF85, the way it renders color and contrast and blacks and all that. So we know that the RF135 does an incredible job with portraits, but let's take the RF135 to the WPPI show in Las Vegas and test it out shooting some street performers, doing a little bit of photojournalism and see what we can come up with. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that 120 frames per second I shot on the RF-135, but check this stuff out on the streets. I'm able to get close enough to my subjects to where they're not bothered. I can get a good shot. I can get good isolation. Oh, and by the way, one of the coolest things about this lens is that it has image stabilization. And how good is it, might you ask? Well, conventional wisdom says, if you're shooting a 135 millimeter lens, you shouldn't handhold any slower than about 1 1 25th of a second. As you can see right here, I'm shooting at 1 13th of a second, and look at how sharp it is. That is unprecedented for a 135 millimeter lens. So I'm sure many of you are looking at these RF-135 images and they look kind of familiar to you in terms of sharpness and bokeh. It's the burning question that you're asking, how does this lens compare to arguably the sharpest lens in the RF lineup with the best and most pleasing bokeh, the RF-85 1.2. So I'm here in Las Vegas at the WPPI show, and I thought that this would be a really great opportunity to test out how the 135 does in photojournalism opportunities, because I do think that Las Vegas uh, lends itself well to photojournalism. You can take pictures of fun subjects from a distance, and I'm gonna compare it to the RF 85 1.2. Now, the point of this exercise isn't to tell you which one's better or worse, because I can already tell you, the 135 looks like the 85, just at 135, and it can only go to 1.8 instead of 1.2. That's the review, uh, spoiler alert. So uh, if you're looking to see which one's sharper or whatever, they kind of are cut from the same cloth, the way they render uh, uh, blacks, their contrast, their color reproduction, they do look similar. And I'm gonna show you some examples, uh, but I wanna also show you that the 85, uh, you may have to get a little closer to your subjects. And in a place like Las Vegas, if you're taking pictures of a street performer who's about to turn to you and go, hey, give me some money, you may want that extra length. Uh, I can tell you also though, from a comparison standpoint, 
Uh, I have pretty average size hands. I can tell you that the 135 is much easier to handle on your camera body than the 85 is. But I will do a bouquet test for you guys because I know that you're probably curious as to uh, how much bouquet the 135 produces versus the 85 because it's a 1.8 versus a 1.2. But with it being a 135 and being able to compress a little bit more at the same distance, it may uh, render things a little bit differently. So let's go around on the streets of Las Vegas today and see what kind of results we can get with both these lenses. And that way you can make an informed decision as to which one you may want to favor. I went for a photo walk at Caesars Palace. There were some really beautiful places to shoot out in that little courtyard area. And I really have a hard time telling a difference between the lenses other than the fact that you can tell the focal length. Their character to me is the same. As I've mentioned, the RF 85 1.2 is my favorite lens. I'm not joking when I say I've probably taken over 100,000 shots on it. So I'm very familiar with the character of it, the way that the files render, etc. And when I look at the 135, I have a hard time telling the difference other than focal length. They look the same to me, uh, and that's a good thing. You want consistency across the board. I can say the same thing about Canon's RF 50 millimeter. So uh, when I look at these shots, uh, I'm in love with them. I think this lens, it does an incredible job. As to whether or not it's better than the RF 85, as I said earlier, spoiler alert, they look the same. If you could trick people into believing that Canon made an 85 to 135 zoom, and you're at the widest and longest parts of the zoom range, it looks like the same lens. In terms of bokeh, obviously the 85 is a 1.2 and the 135 can only go to 1.8, but if you're standing at the same distance and you're still able to frame your shot, I say that the bokeh kind of equals out because of the fact that the 135 is a little more compressed, a little more tight, and so the bokeh balls get kind of big. I don't really notice huge differences in the bokeh, to be quite honest. And if you don't shoot wide open, you'll probably notice that even less. Another new feature on the RF-135 is that it does come with this really cool programmable button. I will tell you right now that both of the buttons on there have to be programmed to the same thing. I believe it's for vertical and portrait orientation. To go in and program that button, you just simply go into your menus, you go to your custom buttons, uh, and here's all the different things that you can actually program it to. I personally just toggle between servo and single point AF. Now let's check out how the RF-135 does on video. All right, so I'm standing about uh, 12 feet away from the camera right now. We are shooting at 1.8. I wanna test out the video capabilities and I also want to use this opportunity to talk to you about today's sponsor. I wanna talk about Gamut. They make cinema LUTs for Canon cameras, like you're seeing here right now. They also make them for Sony and I believe Blackmagic. They don't make them for Fuji yet, but I wanted to let you know that they did give me a base LUT to try out for today's episode. They also make creative LUTs. Uh, there's a link in the description below where you can check out their LUTs. Uh, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm a stills photographer and one of my weaknesses is color grading in post-production. So when they reached out to me, I jumped at the chance to check out these LUTs and try them out. And I think they look pretty lovely as you can see right here. But if you think these LUTs look good, you're a Canon user, you're shooting in C-Log, even if you're a Sony user watching this, maybe go to their website, check it out. I've got a link in the description below, but I wanted to just kind of use this time to show off the video capabilities of the RF-135, uh, 1.8. And I guess there's no better time to mention than now that I do think that the RF-135 did an overall better job on video over the EF, which you would expect with the improved motor. Its minimum focusing distance is eight and a half inches closer, which may be too close for comfort. And to finish out the episode today, let's just do a quick comparison between RF-135 and EF-135 files, and you can just look and judge for yourself as to whether or not you think that this upgrade makes sense for you. I shot both lenses wide open because a lot of times when I go do portrait sessions, I shoot wide open. And so even though you may not use the lens this way, I do. And so I wanna see how much chromatic aberration, purple fringing and all that is in the uh, shots. So I went ahead and I did that while I was taking shots at this fisherman. Now, as I look at these shots just from this distance, they both look pretty good. As you can see right here, this is the RF-135, and this is at 50%. Let's zoom into 100%. And that is darn sharp, and keep in mind, that is wide open, so that is uh, as soft as the lens is gonna get unless you go to the other end and hit diffraction. So let's zoom in. So as you can see with both of these, uh, the highlights here look pretty natural. 
The highlights here look soft and very, <laughs> lots of chromatic aberration, fringing. Uh, from a distance, they both look good. Zoomed in, and of course, this is pixel peeping, and for some of you, you don't care about this, and that's totally fine. But as we look at the files, I mean, you can see the logo. It's readable on both. However, clearly, there's way less contrast on the right uh, than there is on the left. And obviously, you can see in the highlights, look at all of this uh, fringing, chromatic aberration. When you look over here, there's none. And keep in mind, the file on the left is the RF, and this version of Capture One does not have the lens profile. So this is just what the lens looks like. These are raw files. There is a clear winner on the left as far as the resolution, and gosh, I would expect it because this file on the right is a 30 uh, plus year old lens, and the one on the left is a 30 day old lens. So uh, the resolution should hold up better on the left. Let's look at another file. So as I look at both of these, the one on the left this time is the older EF-135 and the one on the right is the RF-135. They're both well over a thousandth of a second, uh, fast enough to freeze motion. Uh, they're both stopped down to F2.5. Now when I zoom into the file on the left, keep in mind this is the 1992 lens. Man, look at that, that looks nice and razor sharp. And for a lot of you watching right now, you're gonna go, I'm good, five, six hundred dollars, I'm sold. That's what I'm gonna roll with. Okay, you see a tiny bit in the catch light. Okay, there it is. That's your chromatic aberration. I'm also zoomed into, what, 400% here? Now let's move on to the file on the right. When I look at the file on the right and I zoom in, I'm at 400%, uh, I don't see the purple. Okay, there's no purple. Uh, both of these files are awesome. I don't think that in this example that there's a huge difference between the two, to be completely honest. I think it's scenario dependent. So what are my final thoughts regarding the RF-135 F1.8? Do we have a new Lord of the Rings? Well, I didn't want to try to rush to be the first person to put my review out. I wanted to put at least half a dozen projects under my belt with it, and I've done some portrait sessions with it. I went out on the streets of Las Vegas, did some photojournalism, some street photography, and comparing it to the RF 85 1.2, which I regard as the sharpest RF lens with the best bokeh, I will say that this RF 135 is as sharp that's right. It is equally sharp to the RF 85 1.2. Uh, the bokeh is completely subjective. I find them to be somewhat similar. So in that regard, despite the fact that the 85 goes to 1.2, uh, you have better compression and uh, you can get pretty close with that 135 and it makes those bokeh balls uh, pretty big. So I find them to be equals. And if you are on like the RF 50 and the RF 85 uh, L lenses, this is the next logical step up in terms of focal length if you do things like weddings and portraiture. It's very much cut from the same cloth in terms of how it renders images. So you're gonna see a consistency no matter which of those three lenses you use in terms of image quality. Comparing it to the EF-135, Shooting wide open, the differences to me are very obvious. A very big loss of contrast, a lot of chromatic aberration infringing on the older EF-135 model, it only made sense that 30 years later that we have a new model to replace it. Now, if you do shoot stops down, or maybe this isn't your bread and butter focal length, that's maybe your fifth or sixth most used lens, uh, five, $600 on the used market, the EF-135 may be exactly what you want. That does it for today's episode. I thank each and every one of you for watching today. Uh, if you're one of the lucky few to have gotten the RF-135 F1.8, Tell me about your thoughts in the comments below. If you love this channel, if you find this information to be useful, I humbly ask you, click the subscribe button below. I would appreciate your support. It helps me grow. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.